string changing. Now don't be nervous. Changing strings can be challenging, but there's nothing to be scared of. Uh, if you go slow and follow a couple of tips that we're going to show you here today, you should be able to change your strings easily and without breaking any. Um, so that's it. Why do we change our strings? We change them for a couple of reasons. Number one, either they, they wore out and it's just time for new ones, or maybe we broke one. Now it's unusual to break violin strings just playing them, um, but I have broken a few over the years playing on stage with extra loud guitar players who have their amplifiers turned up to gee whiz. And uh, changing strings on a dim stage can be a bit of a fun challenge and a little bit stressful, but that's it. Strings come in a lot of different varieties, a lot of different brands, and a lot of different price points. Uh, some strings are more of a soft core and uh, they'll have a warmer sound and they'll be a little more stretchy. A lot of times violin players or classical players will prefer those. Uh, they also come with a steel core and they would have a lot more bright tone and a lot of fiddle players tend to lean towards that direction. Now again none of this is across the board true so everybody likes different stuff I tend to be a fan of the Diodario brand, or Diodario, I guess. Um, I use their Helicor strings and their Prelude strings. That's right, Diodario, I just plugged you. Send me some free strings. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they're great strings. Preludes are great for students and um, for harsh conditions. So I use those when I'm playing a lot uh, towards the coast. And so they, they really handle uh, the bad weather conditions over there. The ones we've got today are the Ascentes made by Dario, and I like them okay. They're not my favorite. I got them just to try. Um, they're more of a soft core string, so for me, they took a long time to break in. Um, but that's it, that's how you learn. So I recommend trying different kinds of strings until you find what you like. Um, you're probably not gonna be able to return them on Amazon after you put them on your fiddle. So, all right. So today we're just gonna change the G, and we're gonna do that to save me from having to put new strings on. Luckily, this is take number one, and I haven't had to put a string on and take it back off yet. <laughs> so, fingers crossed we get this video right. All right, so first of all, we always change our strings one at a time. Um, if we take all the strings off at once, we'll lose our bridge position. So, one at a time, we're gonna change the G, and uh, say the G broke or something's wrong with it, we're gonna just turn this peg back towards us, loosening it, tension on this string right here and it should just neatly pop right on out of there. There we go. There it is. Once it's loose on the peg end, we can pull it out of the tailpiece and you can see we have what's called the ball end right here. And that ball usually fits into the slot in your tailpiece right there. So I'm going to set this aside for either a spare or just a throw away. So how do we know which string is the G? Well, companies like the Dario are cool because they put a guide inside the string pack. So if we're looking at this, we see the G is the red wrapped one. So that'd be this guy right here. All right, so always starting with the wrapped end, see the red wrapping on this end right here. We're gonna start that in the peg end first, and uh, that's just because it stays better that way. So I'm actually gonna tip this fiddle up for a sec, you're not gonna see it. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke this end of this string down into the hole on the peg, and uh, I wanna follow the channel that it's been routed before. I don't wanna cross over the D string or anything like that. So I'm gonna tip this up for just a second, and poke that in through the G. for it. All right, so as I'm poking that in there, and I'm sorry you can't see this particular view, but as I'm poking that in there, I'm going to push it all the way through until it touches the back of the peg box. All right, back into the frame here. So what we've done is we've got that poked through the hole on the peg and actually turned the peg a couple of times just to hold it in place. Now I'm going to advance this until that red wrapping, as you see, it's approaching the nut up here. So I'm keeping some tension on this end down here. I don't want it to go flopping around on me. 
So as that red wrapping finally clears past that nut, that's just about the right time to set the ball end here. Oops. And so we would bring that down and pop that into the little slot there. Looks like we're gonna need to get a little less tension on that string to get it in there where it's supposed to be. Sometimes it'll fight you a little bit. There we go. So now I'm hooked and you can see I'm putting this tension here on the middle. I'll resume turning that peg, tightening it. And as it gets close to tight enough, I'm going to make sure that it's seated properly in the bridge and in the nut. So we have some little slots in there for the string to ride in. Um, once we have that tightened up enough for them to stay. And that's it. And then we'll just simply turn that peg. It sounds kind of cool. And then for tips on how to get it all the way up to tune, you can see my other tuning video and it talks about how to tune by pegs. And that's it. Easy breezy. Um, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.